Hi everyone, Jesse Kitson-Abelson here with The Movement Athlete, and today we'll be talking about how to perform the perfect squat. So today we'll be focusing on what's called the air squat or the body weight squat, and we'll be looking at five main areas as our checklist to make sure we're hitting up the right spots, and that way we're helping you make sure you're on your way to performing the perfect squat. Okay, so let's assess your squat. We're going to, we've got this checklist of five different areas. We'll first look at Blake doing a few reps of the squat and then we'll match it up with what you may or may not be doing. So let's see a few reps. These are called air squats. The arms can be in various positions. We're gonna be doing today with the arms in front of us because that'll help tighten up the muscles of the back. You could also do this with a more clasped hand grip, eventually with weight called the goblet squat. For today, like I mentioned, we'll do it with the arms in front of us to help counterbalance us too. Okay, so we're looking at five main areas when we're doing this squat. First piece to look on the checklist, the foot placement. We want to be about hip width with a slight turnout from neutral. This tends to be where most of us like to stand and walk is a slight turnout, and it'll also help you get deeper into your squat with a slight turnout. Does it need to be this way? It can be parallel, maybe it can be a little bit in. There are anatomical reasons of why you might need to vary your squat. This is really important to keep in mind because we're all built differently and our squats will look a little differently too. So for today, as I mentioned, first step, about hip width, slight turnout, that's the first piece. Second thing, we're gonna look at the knee tracking. We want the knee to be tracking over the lateral toes rather than the big toe on the inside. This kind of direction inward, this valgus is what it's called, is going to be more unstable. So rather, we want to be tracking more towards the lateral toes. We also want to pay attention to the shins. So Blake, let's do a squat coming towards the bottom here, and we'll point these out. So we're looking at the knees. They're not going past the toes, but it's moving laterally towards this size of the toes. Now we want to see the shins and the torso are parallel here. That's the other thing to look at. Okay, that's great, Blake. Let's stand back up. So that's where the knee tracking comes into play. That's our second piece. Third, we'll look at spine neutrality, which means that the spine is going to stay straight. We don't want to be arched and we don't want to be hollowed. Towards the bottom of a squat, there tends to be a rounding of the lumbar spine, which we want to avoid. That'll put a lot of stress on the lower back, and you want to stop before that happens. So we want to keep straight spine in this, lower to the squat, keep the head position neutral as well. Sometimes if your head is too low, it'll exaggerate a rounding, which we do not want. So we'll keep the head relatively forwards, spine neutral. So let's look at another squat here. And so we've got the neutral spine and Blake is going low enough before that lumbar curve happens. We'll also talk about the depth of the squat. This is the fourth piece. We want the hip crease to be below the knee if possible. So this is where we're at right now. Okay, let's stand back up. So if we find that we can go lower with a neutral spine, that would be my preference because more range is better unless we're starting to feel pain or starting to do the wrong technique here. If you go too low, like I said, that lumbar curve does tend to develop. You wanna stay right above that position. So that's the fourth thing on the list. And the fifth thing on the list is weight distribution of where we should be in the squat. Now we want our feet flat and basically the weight will be towards the middle of the foot. Now it's gonna be maybe a little bit more posterior towards the back just because anatomically that's where the ankle is in relation to the rest of the foot. So we want the feet flat and the weight really on top of the ankles here rather than on the toes or the heels. So let's look at that as our fifth piece of the checklist. And this is something you wanna pay attention to in your squat. Okay, so we're at the bottom. It should still pretty much right in the center, right over the ankles when we do this squat. Okay, that's good, Blake, thank you. And if you are doing this incorrectly, it would look like maybe the heels are coming off. This could be due to pain in the ankles or maybe a tightness in the Achilles where you cannot get to this range of motion where the ankle needs to dorsiflex in this kind of position. And rather, your heels are coming off because you ran out of range and you're at your end range and you can't keep your foot flat. So that could be one reason. You wanna just keep the feet stable. Don't be on the toes, don't be on the heels, but pretty much right in the middle over top of the ankles. So those are the five pieces of the checklist that you wanna look at when you're doing your squat. Really quick. If you want to get started with calisthenics but are unsure of how to do so, I highly recommend trying our free calisthenics assessment. It will only take you five minutes to complete. You'll receive a detailed personalized training program complete with recommendations and workouts you can use right away. If you found these videos helpful, please click the like button below and leave any comments or questions you might have in the comment section below. See you next time.